In the last vlog, we shared a few entertaining ways for your viewing pleasure. Apart from the entertainment factor and a lot of humble pie for me, there are actually some valuable learning points that some surfers who know what they're talking about observe. They then made some suggestions on how I could fix them. In this video, we're going to start sharing some of these points, along with some decent ways from the pro surfers who helped out. Want to know what they had to say and what the advice was? Then you're going to like this video. I'm James Davis, and I've been a skydiver for over 20 years, jumping and competing all around the world. In the last 18 months, I've been surfing at the wave pool in Bristol to see if wave pools can do for surfing what wind tunnels did for skydiving. I wanted to see what would happen if an average surfer trained at the wave pool for a year if they could learn to get barreled, sharing all the mistakes, learning points and experiences along the way. So let's introduce our first pro surfer that helped us, Mr. Patrick Bevan. Originally from Brazil, but residing in Osigor, Patrick has been a standout surfer in the area for over a decade. He can be found waiting for the bombs on any sizable swell that hits the region. Patrick started out surfing on the competition circuit, with notable wins against surfers like Joel Parkinson at the Quicksilver Pro in Osigor, before helping coach some current household name surfers and doing more free surfing work with Ruka. He's also a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, so he's great at breaking techniques down. Let's start by having a look at this beautiful piece of surfing. What do you think he identified as the problems? And yes, there are lots of them. First up, the arched body position throughout the takeoff sequence and its impact on paddling. With regards to catching a wave, there are downsides to using it. Patrick pointed out that if you paddle like this all the time, you're only getting a fraction of the paddle strength because your paddle stroke is not maximized. It's effectively a doggy paddle and you don't get a full stroke in, so you're leaving some paddle speed on the table. If you want to paddle flat out, then lowering the head, shoulders and chest so that the chin is very close to the boards can help. If you go back to Rob Case's information, he talks a lot about drag being the main factor that slows the surfer down when they're paddling. Rob talks about having the head, chest and shoulders close to the board, and in fact even looking at the board if possible. He also mentions the advantage of having a high elbow in the paddle stroke and keeping the head as still as possible but go to his YouTube channel to hear him talk about these things. Apart from paddle speed, it seems that another downside of keeping the arch position is that I am not making any use of changes in weight distribution, which in turn impacts the trim of the board. Okay, very early on in our surfing lives, most of us will have learned about avoiding nose diving or being too far back on the board, but clearly I didn't fully appreciate how you can harness these changes in trim to help you catch the wave. Patrick talks about constantly lowering and raising the head, chest and shoulders throughout the takeoff process to help you catch the wave. There is some good information about the takeoff from the Ombi guys, where they talk about their Oreo cookie approach to popping up, 
and that once a wave has started to be caught, then arching and raising the upper body or pushing down on the board directs the energy of the wave in a positive way. A different explanation, but along the same lines. Serve and Reviews with Noel Salas also has some free content talking about catching waves. Noel also suggests having the chin next to the board and using the arms in front of the surfer to change the weight and trim of the board. Now that I'm looking out for it, you can see so many pro surfers using these techniques. The Tahui Backdoor Shootout in Hawaii has just happened. And when you watch the surfers trying to get into the pipeline waves, you can clearly see them with a posture which has their chin and chest close to the board as they look to maximize paddle speed and change the trim and weighting of the board to get into the waves. Patrick's home break is Aussie Gore, an area renowned for shifting beach breaks. So the point he was making is that learning the technique of using your upper body to help you catch waves is really useful. Now this isn't going to be simple to start doing as I've clearly got used to using a certain position having the board trimmed when paddling. It's going to take some practice to make the changes but it seems there is something to it if so many people are using the techniques. So I'm going to start trying to use it with my surfing. In the next episode, we introduce some of the other pro surfers that helped us. If you're curious to what they had to say, you're going to have to tune in to find out.